I'm here now with Kyle Bryant, the famous Kyle Bryant, I want to say. So he's famous for many things. He wrote a book called Shifting Into High Gear. He's a former motivational speaker, spokesperson, founder, and director of Ride Ataxia for the Friedrichs Ataxia Research Alliance, and so much more. Kyle, thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I always love talking to you, brother. <laughs> love talking to you, too. So, I mean, we'll get into, we have good and, I have good and bad questions, so I'll jump in right into the bad stuff and get that out of here. <laughs> right. No one wants to talk about it, but, I mean, you got to do it sometimes, so. Yeah. First off, so, Kyle in our somewhere in the sense we both suffer from the disease Friedrich's taxia. Kyle and I were obviously we live different lives. He was diagnosed at a different age, all that. So do you just want to walk through um your diagnosis, how you felt about it, what led up to it and all that? Yeah, I was diagnosed when I was 17. So you know, right in the middle of the like coming of age period of life. And um, it was in baseball is where we really noticed it because baseball really demands like balance of coordination and, you know, a high level of skill, right? And, and we would find out that my skills were going downhill. And we noticed that because I wasn't able to throw a ball accurately or run down a fly ball in the off field, you know? And so that's what really made us start looking for answers. And it took almost a year to get a diagnosis. Um, and finally we were diagnosed with Friedrich's ataxia, something that we'd never heard of before. And, you know, we found out like you and a lot of our friends, that it's a rare neuromuscular disease that has no treatment or cure. And I would be in a wheelchair soon. I would slowly lose all ability to take care of myself. And I would likely die a premature death due to heart disease. I mean, those are the things you read on the internet, right? And so, you know, those are the things that really stuck out to us. But I think you know, what we didn't realize was that the diagnosis doesn't change certain things. You know, it doesn't change who you are and it doesn't change the beautiful things about life that you can still experience despite the diagnosis, so. Oh yeah, man, oh yeah, Kyle. Always saying the cool thing. So I said it uh, originally, but so when I was uh, diagnosed and told informed at a young age I was very nervous I only knew my sister who had FA um so it was very daunting I would definitely say that and as you said like when you read stuff on the internet scares the poop out of you pretty much I don't know yeah. you're like oh my god I'm and I was in high school at the time so I was extremely worried like oh my god I'm gonna die tomorrow yeah, that's where your mind goes yeah, for sure. It's, yeah. It's very dark. So like I said, I am a sister, but it was tough with the boy male relationship. So of course you see a lot online, a lot of dark stuff. We see a lot of good stuff. And I found you, huh, Kyle Bryan. I saw what you were doing with speeches and with books and what you were doing for the ride of taxi. And I was like, holy crap, I got to be like this dude, this guy. Oh, man. He's so happy. He's got something figured out. Got to do what I got to do to be like that. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you, Kyle. Oh, and man. I bet a lot of people in the FA community can thank you for everything you've done. Well, yeah, absolutely, man. We're all in this together, you know. we. I think we kind of take inspiration from each other. And I think we push hard because of each other and for each other, you know? I think that that's one of the beautiful things about the community, so. Yeah, I agree. There's like, besides you, like 
four of the people I can think of right away that inspire me, like by that day or motivate me to do more, like right. Whether they be 13 years old or 25 years old, it's crazy their attitudes. Totally. Fun to see, fun to watch. So as I was saying, you got into speaking. Um, do you want to walk us walk us down that road and what led to uh, your TED talk? So where it really started was in Toastmasters. And um, you might be familiar with Toastmasters. And it's a public speaking club. And my club met once a week in Sacramento. And I started going and it was all right for a while. But then I really started getting into it in um in my club, it was really immersive. So you could you could basically speak every single week, whether it was a prepared speech or a, you know just telling a joke or whatever it was. Um, but you know, I committed to speaking once a week for a year. And no, I'm sorry. Once a week, it was it was once a week for more like three years. Mm -hmm. I almost didn't miss a a week, and um, and you know when I was out of town, I was like, oh, I don't get to go to Toastmasters this week. So, really, it was just you know getting comfortable and kind of developing some material. And then when I developed my main speech. I actually, I went to different Toastmasters clubs around Sacramento where I lived at the time. And I gave the speech, like, I, I would give it like three times a week at different Toastmasters clubs and just try out different audiences and, and get reactions and, and feedback and stuff. And so really just exercising that muscle is what, was good for me and then you know I went I was riding bikes with a friend and he's like yeah I'm I'm the founder of TEDx Phoenixville and that that was it. that's in Pennsylvania where I I didn't I actually didn't even know that he was the guy and he's like hey do you want to speak this year so because he'd seen some of my examples like or some of my previous um material and I think that's the key is, you know, building up a library, even if it's small, a few speeches of really good stuff that you can, that people can actually see, oh, this is, this guy's good. Um, you know, he, he's not just uh, like, like, I think brochures and stuff are different than like, obviously like a video that really shows you in action you know and so i think you know just getting out there and doing it a whole lot and getting some stuff on video was really important see what impressed me most is how you would say find the tedx creator in phoenix right or phoenixville yeah it's a small town here in pennsylvania some yeah. people would say oh kyle lucky because you just so happen to find my guy and you see it around the world. You see a lot of people take advantage of opportunities, but you assume they got lucky. And a lot of celebrities and stars will say it's they did get lucky as well. But from them and from what I've learned and from you as well, it's not people get lucky, but people do, but it's what you do with that luck that matters. Totally. So not only did you get lucky, you gave an amazing speech, which I'll post below. And you, I mean, you've shined ever since. So we'll get into more. Um, yeah, well, real quick on that note, you know, I think that you have to be prepared mm -hmm. to take advantage of the luck when it strikes, you know, like if, if I hadn't put in time and time and time for all those speeches that I did up to that point, like, I wouldn't have been ready to capitalize on that opportunity, you know? So, yeah. Um, so I'm trying to go in chronological order. So correct me if I'm wrong. So as you were giving your speeches, you were grotting. Um, can you 
walk everyone through like what how your bike riding started to where you are now yeah so it really started when i saw someone else online it way back in the day when the internet was real young as you can see from the gray beard on my face but um it's good don't worry <laughs> But I saw somebody online and he had MS and he was about to circumnavigate the country on this thing called the recumbent tricycle. Now I'd never seen a recumbent tricycle before. And I was like, oh my gosh, I think I can do that. And when I took, I was, so I went and found a dealer that sells these things and when I took a test ride, the first pedal stroke, it was just like, I'm getting chills right now, even thinking about it because it was just so much possibility in that one pedal stroke and so much potential. I could feel my love for this machine in that one pedal stroke, you know? And so I started riding in, Really, it started out small with a ride of seven miles. And I had no idea I had that in me, but that's, you know, that's where it started. And now I just built up from there. The only thing I could think about was riding my trike. And, and you know, I still love it. it that, that love has never worn off. It's pretty, I keep waiting for it to wear off a little bit, but no, it never does. But, um, so really it was just, I loved doing it. And so I did a whole lot and I built up to a hundred miles in a day within four months. And once I finished that, right, that was so hard. And I feel like I barely met, it took me 10, 10 hours to do that century. But I proved to myself that I really could and maybe I really was a cyclist, an athlete. Like, it's pretty, it's quite a mind change, right? To go from thinking of ourselves as somebody with a disability to thinking of ourselves as athletes. And I know that's part of what you get out of CrossFit and all the fitness that you do. It's just participating in athletics. Like that's so cool to think of ourselves like that. And that's kind of really where where it started for me after I finished that century. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're so humble. Like when you first started out to where you've taken ride a taxi, you've inspired it's well into the triple digits, I would say. And that's pretty incredible. You inspired people with their very who have no idea how to stay active to do that. That's incredible. Yeah, no, that's one of the things I, I absolutely love. We have a program called the uh, Ataxi and Athlete Initiative, and we fund the purchase of adaptive cycling equipment for people with ataxia that want to start their own ride taxi adventure and you know seeing people take their first pedal stroke to you know finishing a 25 50 100 mile ride um it re it's really really rewarding so yeah i mean it was awesome so one thing i forgot to mention about kyle is he's also a movie star um so do you want to walk me and my audience through like how you became a movie star that entire process? Well, really, that was kind of serendipity also because so all right, I wasn't I put together a team for the world's toughest bike race. Um, it actually wasn't my initial thought like I, I got invited onto a team that was going to do this and they were going to do it for FA. And I was like, all right, I'm down. Like, let's give it a shot. And then the person who initiated it had to, because of some stuff that happened in her life, she had to back out and she wasn't going to do it anymore. So I was like, all right, we're making an all FA team. So I asked Sean Bombsark and the two of our friends actually, so I say all FA, but, um, 
the so is me and Sean and two of our friends that don't have AA but are really dedicated friends, right? And um, so that's how I got into it. Um, the world's toughest bike race, race across America, and it's um from San Diego to Annapolis, Maryland, literally all the way across the country from ocean to ocean, 3,000 miles, and you have to finish in less than nine days. And so as we were preparing for this, I was writing a blog, like a bunch of blog posts. And one of the things I mentioned in my blog posts is that we are looking for someone to document the journey. So it lasts longer than eight or nine days. Mm -hmm. And so I was literally thinking of someone like with a handy cam and just like, like documenting things. But um, one of my friends from high school read my blog post. She contacted her friend who was a budding filmmaker and he didn't have a project at the time and he's like this sounds awesome let's do it so um they got a few of their friends like so he was working with another guy and they got a few of their friends to uh to come on the journey with us and they documented the whole thing and it and turned it into a beautiful documentary the two producers that were the original one was kevin schlancer and uh, his buddy, Zach Bennett, were just amazing. They're, they're brilliant filmmakers. And then, you know, another producer on the post-production was Nate Adams and um, just awesome, awesome guys. So that's kind of how I got into it. I mean, that it was really serendipitous. Really what it was was like, all right, we're going to throw it out there into the universe, do this big race and see what happens. And, you know, it, it really turned out amazing because I mean, we're, we're still talking about it right now. And it's because of that movie, right? Like if, if that movie wasn't made, then yeah, cool. I did a cool bike rider. We put together a team for this race, but but it, it was it's so much more than that because of the movie so it was uh very cool the attack team is called a post link bullet the next thing i want to talk about is your book um how you wrote it i know it has it has a good amount to do with your bike ride but it has more so do you just want to talk more about that for us yeah you know really the book is about what was going on in my head like during my diagnosis and during the time when I was really trying to figure out what the heck to do with the rest of my life and I, I'm still trying to figure it out every day but but um you know that was a really like formative period of um coming to grips with the FA seeing myself as a disabled guy and trying to figure out what to do with that, you know? And so really that's the concept of the book, but it's it's on the vehicle of this bike ride that we did from um, San Diego to Memphis. So this one was in 2007, it was three years before Race Across America. And I rode with my dad and my mom was, was uh, driving the sport vehicle. And so, you know, it was really three people's effort to do whatever we can to fight back against this disease and not, not so much the disease at first. And it was more because we personally needed to do this for ourselves to figure out how we could stand up to the challenges in our lives and see what we're made of. And I think that is why we take on challenges, right? To see what we're made of and, and prove to ourselves a lot of times. Um, and so, you know, in, 
in the beginning, my journey was really about me. But I found out that it was, I could serve the FA community in the process. And it truly was a really neat thing to realize that I could make such a big effect on others. You really did. So uh, thank you, Guy. I really appreciate you joining. Uh, we learned a lot. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate you inviting me to have a conversation. Absolutely.